Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here again as a speaker. Um, so uh, this, uh, this time with a new project, and we are going to talk about how to leverage large language model to transform natural language query into structured solar queries. Just a quick introduction about ourselves. My name is Ilaria, I'm Italian. I earned a master in data science in 2020 and soon after joined his team where I've been working as uh, information retrieval machine learning engineer. In fact, I mainly deal with the integration of machine learning and deep learning technologies into search engine and information retrieval system. Over to Duana now. Thank you, Laria. So my name is Hanna. Uh, I'm always Italian, located near Venice. I have a master um, degree in um, data, um, sorry, computer science at the University of Padova. And uh, I am a machine learning uh, search software engineer at CIS. So we would like just to spend a couple of words about our company. So uh, our headquarters is in London, but we are actually uh, distributed worldwide. So. Um, First of all, we are open source enthusiasts. Whenever we have time, we'll have to contribute uh, back, mostly on the Apache uh, Lucene and Solar project, uh, for which we are experts, and we give consultants also uh, to Elasticsearch OpenSearch. Um, we are also acti uh, active researchers on many topics. We have published also a paper at the European uh, Conference of Information Retrieval. Um, we work on some hot trends like large language model application, vector-based search, natural language processing, learning to rank, and also uh, document similarity, search quality evaluation, and relevance tuning. So starting with uh, today's presentation, this is the, the agenda. So we would like to start uh, giving an overview of the use case for our implementation, so uh, to understand why uh, we decide actually to exploit large language model for uh, the tasks of construct structured queries. Then uh, we are going to uh, deep dive in the implementation of our approach and uh, present the findings uh, we obtained, so all the observation pros, cons, difficulties we encountered during this uh, process. And finally, uh, a road to production to see what actually is needed in order to bring this in a real uh, scenario. So just a couple of quick words on large language models, since I think that already know about um, from all of you. But uh, large language models are um, artificial intelligence models based on the transformer family, which actually uh, are trained on a huge amount of data in order to be able to actually um, predict uh, or a word uh, in a sentence. So for the next token prediction, the idea is that you uh, train the model in order to be able to uh, predict the next word of a sentence. Or for the mask language modeling, that means that the model try to predict the missing word in a sentence. And through this um, training, the model is actually able to learn the uh, statistical structure of a language. It can also be fine-tuned for specific tasks and for our uh, application, we actually use uh, a model that is fine-tuned for uh, following instructions. So why uh, we need large language model for this task? So there are some lexical problems related to the keyword matching in search. So the first one is the vocabulary mismatch problem where uh, actually with some searches we could encounter some uh, false positive and false negative results. So in the first case, with the false positive, the idea is that um, we retrieve some documents since they match actually the terms in the query, but they do not contain the information need the user is searching for. The other uh, scenario is where we obtain some uh, false negative so we actually are not retrieving the document um, since the terms are not matching the one of the user query, but in the collection there were some documents that are, are actually answering uh, the user information need. And in the worst case scenario, um, we actually do not retrieve any documents, so we have what is called uh, a zero result query. 
Then the second problem is the semantic similarities. So again, related to terms, we could have some uh, terms that are actually uh, similar, but in totally different uh, meaning context. So uh, in the first example here, we have how old are you and how are you? So we are actually using the same words here, the same terms, but with a totally different meaning. Like uh, we also could have the opposite. Uh, so we have different terms with the same meaning, like how old are you and what is your age? So we are actually asking for the same thing, but with different terms. And in this case, we are not matching um, the two things together since the terms are different. And finally, disambiguation. So if we think about, for example, Apple, uh, we need to understand if we are referring to the brand or if you are referring to the fruit. So just with the term, it's difficult to understand what the user is searching for. There are some lexical solutions, actually, that could be used for solving these problems. Um, some are manually curated, some are algorithmic. So for the manually curated, we could have some uh, lists uh, for synonyms, hypernyms, hyponyms, so we can actually define and make the search engine uh, aware of <coughs> which are the similar terms. Or algorithmic, like stemming, lemmatization, or the usage of a knowledge base for disambiguation purposes. Um, the main thing we need to keep in mind here is that these solutions are actually expensive, uh, both to develop the first time and then also to maintain in time. And they are usually um, implemented for some specific problems, but sometimes it could uh, create problems in other uh, contexts and scenarios. So it's something that needs to be um, detailed, uh, clearly uh, implemented and studied. So here is actually, we would like to exploit large language model capabilities. And these two are the main capabilities uh, we use for this uh, approach we're going to present. So the fact that with a large language model, we could actually expand query and documents. And um, in particular, uh, with two different purposes. So the first one is the generative capability of the large language model. So we would like to use it to actually um, obtain additional terms, synonyms, and query reformulation to uh, increase the recall of our searches. And then extractive, so the idea is that we could exploit the large language model to better understand the user information need and then extract the relevant information from our uh, collection of documents. And this is an example. So we could have a natural language query like this one. So PM10 levels produced by industries in the European community in May 2015. And what the model is able to do is actually understand that PM10 is something that is related to the fields we have in our collection that is pollutant, and also that the PM10 is related to the particular PM10 value for that field. And the same for the European community. So it could understand that the European community is related to the country field in our uh, collection and then to the European Union value. And the same for the variable industries with uh, man-made emission, industrial combustion, time period with the second trimester, the model is able to understand that is related to May. And finally, the, the year. So um, we have been working with some of our clients uh, to exploit large language model. Uh, first of all, to disambiguate the meaning of the user natural language query, then to extract the relevant information from our collection, and finally use this extracted information to actually implement a structured solar query for the final search. One of our clients for which we uh, develop this solution is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, in particular the Statistical Information System Collaborator uh, Community. So actually, in our next examples, we are going to uh, show you some um, a collection related to st statistical data. So uh, 
um, going inside the implementation, uh, this is the uh, overall ar architecture. So we have three main components. The first one is the large language model. Then uh, we have the Apache Solar uh, search engine for the storing of our uh, documents. And finally, the search API, which actually uh, is going to uh, take an input the user query, manage it, and then pass it or through the large language model, and then finally to Solar for uh, the final uh, query. This is a detailed description of architecture, but yeah, we are going to see it step by step, so I don't want now you to read everything here, but just to make you know that there is uh, the user query on the left that is, is uh, in some way manipulated and passed through the large language model. We actually, uh, which actually implement um, the generative and extractive tasks. And um, the returned um, value from the model is then used inside Sora to extract the final relevant documents. So starting with the first step of the implementation, we need actually to obtain the, uh, let's say, knowledge base, the ground truth, so the uh, information of how our uh, documents are structured inside Solar and the information contained. So we would like to have like a list of all the fields we have inside Solar and the corresponding values. So here is uh, a JSON representation of this information. We have these fields like topic, dimension of our statistical data, the reference area, and then the list of value. This is just a smaller representation to give you an idea. So for topic, we have like economic, agriculture, for dimension, time period, year, and finally the, the countries, Australia, Australia in the reference area. Once we have this information, we can start elaborating the user query. So make an example like what were the sulfur oxide emissions in Australia in 2013 as our user query. We, as first step, uh, create a prompt to ask the large language model to actually extract the relevant information from um, our uh, knowledge base. So um, the prompt is uh, structured in three points. The first one is the fact that in the prompt, we actually pass the model, uh, the knowledge we have about the solar collection. So the list of fields and value we just obtain. Then we ask the model to actually um, consider the user uh, query to extract the relevant information from this um, object representation. So uh, the idea is that the model is going to actually return us a subset of the fields and the value, just the one related to the user query. And finally, the formal requirements. So like asking a JSON format or a maximum of three fields for the user query, a maximum of five value for each field, and something like this. And here is an example of the model uh, answer. So in this case, the model was able to understand that the topic of the user query is related to environment, air, and climate. Then the user is asking for the Australia country, so the model select the country field, and then for the country field, the Australia value. And the same for variable, uh, the model select the total main emission and pollutant, the sulfur oxide, and finally the year. So something like the uh, parsing we have seen just, just before. Then the second task the large language model do is query formulation. So we, again, uh, create a prompt to ask the model to actually create an um, additional way to um, ask for the same thing the user is searching for, adding additional relevant terms, adding synonyms and variations So in order to expand, actually, uh, the capabilities of our uh, query. And again, here is an example. So we have sulfur oxide emission in the query. In the model, return sulfur dioxide emission. It understands uh, that is related to air pollution, environmental impact, fossil fuel combustion, and acid rain. So here are a list of terms that the model actually returns for this query. Then we 
actually put together uh, all this thing in the uh, final solar query. So for the generative terms, we put them inside um, the uh, title field, so we search for them inside the title field of our solar collection, while the selected filters are here put in or uh, with these conditions, so we are adding the topic environment and in order the country, Australia, variable total made emission, etc. This is just a very, very simple solar query just to see how it performs. Clearly here you can um, complicate as you want this kind of solar query and tune it and optimize it for your uh, specific purposes. And here are the final search results. So after creating the solar query with the extracted information, we obtain, for example, these documents, which is actually related to emissions of air pollutant. It actually contains the dimension that the user was searching for. So country, pollutant, variable, and the year. So I leave to Ilaria, the next part. Thank you, Anna. Uh, okay, yes, for our experiment, uh, for our project, yes, we, uh, we have started uh, exploring the DSPY library, that is a framework designed uh, uh, to build a large language model based application, and it could be very useful because it separates the flow of your program, so the modules, from the parameters, prompt and weights of each step. And then it also introduced new optimizers uh, that are algorithms to tune prompt and weight of your lang um, language model call uh, to improve a specific metric. And then language model and their prompt fed uh, into the background as optimizable pieces of a large system that can learn from data. We have used this library to manage all the requests to the large language model. And rather than uh, manually uh, are coded the prompt with the DSPY, uh, we provide instruction and building blocks using the DSPY uh, functionalities. And you can have a more programmatic and uh, systematic uh, approach to automatically generate the prompt uh, tailored to your data and the large language model chosen. The slogan of the library is programming, not prompting language model. Is it really as it suggests? We have to say that from our experiment, this goal is, I mean, partially achieved. What we mean is that uh, you can fully uh, the, the pro um, you can fully program the model to get the desired result 100% uh, of the time. So instead, you can of course create the best possible prompt and then check the result afterwards, uh, thanks to the validation feature. In fact, you can set the type of input and output, but then if the model um, response doesn't match, the validation will fail, and there is no way to, to, to fix it. Um, but of course, we would like to go uh, deeper and study more this library, um, because we know that there are other features that are very useful, and we don't have too much time to explore them. But uh, if anyone had uh, uh, opportunity to work with this library more than has and want to share their insight, we are very happy to, to discuss them. Now we would like to share with you our findings, so uh, examine both uh, the promising aspect and also the areas of improvement. Uh, okay, we want to start with a disclaimer, so we have to say that uh, uh, for our project, uh, we didn't use the, the, the latest or the most advanced model available for our task, uh, and also we weren't uh, able to conduct evaluation or comparison with alternative models due to time constraints and limited budget in our uh, project. Of course, uh, there are many solutions, and in the future there will be others, but in our case, we just wanted to verify the use of uh, um, an instruct uh, large language model out of the box uh, to perform this kind of task, and we choose them for their promising capabilities and quick implementation uh, in a practical application. But of course, we have uh, planned to explore and analyze uh, uh, models that are specifically fine-tuned for our task, or we could also potentially undertake our fine-tuning to optimize the model performance, and of course, model comparison to choose uh, then the, the best model for our case. Talking now about the promising aspect, so uh, using this approach, we can overcome the lexical matching, so large language model confirm the ability to map 
uh, query term to uh, the related content in our solar corpus, as we can see, for example, in these two, in these two examples. So given uh, the query land of kangaroos, the model is able to understand uh, that we are talking about Australia, that is famous for kangaroos, so was able to identify that the relevant field is country and select the, the field Australia. The same for the query tobacco consumption. So the model is able to understand uh, that a, a relevant field is topic uh, and relevant value for this, field, for this query are smoking or risk factor for health. Another promising aspect is the explainability of the result. So explainability is always Im important and when talking about uh, keyword-based search, uh, it's easy to understand why a document is returned, but when talking about large language model or machine learning model in general, it's not so easy. And using the DSPY library, we were able to obtain uh, uh, in the model response not only the field, uh, the, 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 the list of the relevant field with values, but also a reasoning part. And now in, the, in these slides, we have just schematized the reasoning part just to give you an understanding, but the model uh, um, analyzed the input text that in our case was uh, uh, cost per square meter for family houses in Italy. And it was able to associate uh, to the query terms uh, some keywords uh, and also associate uh, um, relevant uh, field, uh, field values. So starting, for example, from the cost per square meters, uh, this suggests that we are looking for a value related to pricing or valuation, which could be related to our solar field uh, price unit or value. Uh, family houses, uh, these indicate a type of property, so which could be related to our uh, field real estate type real estate type, and finally Italy. This is a location which could be related to our field reference area or borrower's country. An interesting idea could be to use uh, such a explainability snippet, uh, so to, to, sh to display it to the, to the user and integrate it as an assistant feature to guide the user in choosing the most suitable filter. So this will help user uh, to pre-select the filter and give them uh, the reason of the selected choice. So this could uh, be a good feature to enhance the, the user experience. And finally, yes, we have to undertake that, uh, uh, we have to em emphasize uh, the fact that uh, the task is challenging and is very complex. So uh, the fact that uh, using a commercial out-of-the-box uh, model uh, we are able to achieve good results uh, with a simple and straightforward uh, implementation uh, is amazing. So with our early result, uh, we are very happy because they confirm the model, um, the model uh, uh, potential and adaptability to, to the context. Now passing to, to the limitation that we encountered during our experiment and we want to divide it into parts, uh, functional and formal limitation. Regarding the functional limitation, these are the large language model weaknesses in the language query semantic comprehension. So yes, these are related to the semantic part. The model has to, un has to be able to understand uh, what we are talking about and to make the right connection between the query terms uh, and the information that we have in our corpus of data. Regarding the formal limitations, uh, they are the large language model weaknesses in complying with the problem definition and they require output format. So regarding the first one, the, the problem is uh, defined and is very specific. So in our case, as Anna showed you, we have a map, a dictionary, and we want to obtain another map following the mathematical rule where uh, the set of key of the second map has to be a subset of the, of the key of the first map. And then for each key, the set of values of the second map has to be a subset of the values in the first map. So there is no need for the model to add uh, additional information beyond the, these given parameters. Regarding the required output format, we mean that we ask the model for a JSON response and we expect a JSON without any uh, comments or any unusual format. And now we will see what we, what we mean. Regarding the functional limitation, we observe a good but non-optimal accuracy because the model sometimes struggles to identify relevant fields when others share the same values. 
as you can see in this example. So in our solar uh, collection, we have these two fields, uh, country and borrower's country. And as you can see, the, these two fields share the same values. So for the model, maybe um, difficult to understand or to discern which of these two fields are more relevant uh, to, the, to the user query. Another limitation is that, uh, um, that the model struggles to identify relevant fields when highly specialized domain knowledge is required, as you can see from this example. So um, marginal landing facility rate, this is the query, and for an expert in economics, uh, it's easy to uh, understand that this query is only related to Europe. So it's easy for, for, the, for the expert to refer this query to the field reference area and select the value Europe. But for the model, it's not so easy to make this, uh, this connection. The same for the second example, IMU tax. Uh, we are Italians, so we know that these are the Italian municipality property tax uh, for real estate. So for us, it's easy, it's easy to, make, to make this connection and to select the field sector and uh, the value real estate, but for the, model, for the model, this is not uh, trivial. And then, uh, sometimes, uh, right value for a field are not selected, even if uh, it is present, as you can see in this example. So, um, the user query was uh, uh, green growth in Rabat, and from the explainability part of the model response, uh, you can see that the model was able to uh, understand that uh, uh, Rabat is the capital of Morocco, and for the field country, Morocco is the relevant value. But the model said Morocco would be the relevant value if it were listed, but is not. So, uh, in, on the contrary, in our corpus, we have the field uh, country and we have the value Morocco, so we would expect uh, this, uh, this field uh, to, be, to be selecting and to be returning the response, but the model wasn't, wasn't able to, to return it. What could be the possible solution about the functional limitation? Of course, refinement of the input solar dictionary. So uh, this is a win for those like us who always ask to, the, to, to our client to use understandable solar field, as you can see from these two, two examples that are real examples. So, the first one is an incomprehensible string that doesn't provide any additional uh, information, and it means category. Or sometimes uh, uh, clients use abbreviations like uh, inst non edu, which means non educational institutions. So uh, it's, it could be better to use human readable field names because there will be also large language model readable field names. Uh, another solution is an ad hoc prompt engineering, so we have to, um, to approach. First of all, expanding the prompt with ambiguous or difficult example. This is what they call few-shopped prompting. So as, as you can see, the, the example that we have seen before, since they are um, ambiguous example or more, more domain specific, we could, for example, add this example, so the queries uh, and the expected result in our, uh, in our prompt to uh, help uh, the model to understand what we want to achieve. Or, uh, for example, we could break down the prompt. So instead of using a huge prompt uh, with a lot of information and make uh, just one single uh, request to the large language model, we could split the prompt into simpler, uh, simpler prompt with less information and make more requests to the large language model just for the specific task. In our case, just for the topic selection, value selection, dimension selection, and so on. And of course, uh, um, we could also potentially undertake uh, large language model fine tuning for a better disambiguation and to learn uh, the specific and, and then domain related task. Regarding the formal limitations, um, we have observed that uh, sometimes the model uh, uh, hallucinates the field names. What I mean is that uh, in our corpus, uh, we have a field name uh, type of instruments, but the model return as a field name just instrument or hallucinate the field values. So in our corpus, we have a field here with a possible values that is 2000, but the model instead return as value of year 21st centuries. So, uh, and also, sometimes the model return field values that are mixed up, like in our example. So um, the first one 
total emissions per capita. This is a part of a value, but the model returns it as a, as a dimension, as a field. And also the second one, European Union, 28 countries. This is a valid value present in the country field, but the model returned this value for another field, for reference area, that didn't contain this, uh, this value. And finally, yeah, sometimes the model, as also said before, return a purely formatted JSON. What I mean is that we ask for a JSON response and we expect a JSON. But as you can see, the model um, had some comment in the middle and at the end of the response. And this is something that we would like to avoid because we have to make a study to understand all the possible um, variant of the model responses in order to be able to parse the, the response. Okay, which could be the possible solution for this formal limitation. Uh, Post-processing, of course, to validate and correct the large language model answer. Then, as already said, we would like to study more in depth the DSPY library, um, for example, the type predictor and the optimizer features um, that are related to the type constraints and the optimization of the prompt. Also, yes, the evaluation of additional libraries and strategies. And finally, fine tuning the model for the specific task that in our case is the information extraction. Okay, now we can conclude our talk with the road to production. So all the steps that are necessary to bring such a project into production. Uh, first of all, design the user experience. So we should uh, talk with the client and understand how they want to use the large language model in their search engine. Uh, we, they could use it as a filtering assistance, as we have seen before. So uh, using it uh, uh, to, to help the user to uh, select the, the, the filters in, um, and, and give them the reason of the selected choice or they can use it as a transparent query parsing. So um, use the large language model behind the scenes we are without any user interactions, and of course this system should be more robust and error-free. Then uh, we have to study the state of the art and uh, finalize uh, the, the choice of the large language model. You can go commercial or open source, uh, and of course in presence of uh, uh, time, data, budget, you can also fine-tune promising model for the specific task. Then, according to the model chosen, the prompt uh, may be different, so we have to refine it uh, and uh, refine the prompt accordingly. And then implement integration test with the most common failures, so we should uh, study some uh, example queries to identify possible uh, uh, problematic cases uh, and implement integration test for, uh, for this one. And then, of course, study additional libraries to make the prompt more programmed and automatically tune a less trial and error, and this is highly depend on the large language model available. And then performance benchmark, so stress test the solution before in the QA and development environment before uh, bringing it to, to production. And, and finally, of course, the, the search quality evaluation. So it is considered ideal to establish uh, an evaluation uh, uh, considering a comprehensive set of, square, set of queries uh, with the expected document uh, in order to be able to test the qualities of, uh, of your result, of your system. OK, I hope you enjoyed uh, this talk. and. Uh, we would like to say that uh, we have um, also written a blog post about this talk that will be published soon in our website. So if you want to stay up to date, we invite you to subscribe to our information retrieval newsletter, scanning the, the QR code. And yeah, thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you, Anna and Ilaria. We're now opening the floor for questions. Okay. Thank you, Ray. So actually, I have two questions. First question is, 
um, the focus of your search was, and of the using of the LMM was, on um, providing uh, good filters for your search. And maybe some synonyms for a title field that I briefly saw, but it's, it's not a full text search which has huge, huge amounts of text content um, where you search in. Is this correct? You can. Yeah, so actually, um, since this is a project asked for one of our clients, the main uh, thing they were uh, looking for is uh, manipulate and extract, create the solar query uh, starting from this natural language query. So it isn't something that is usual to see nowadays in People is still searching sometimes for just the keywords, so like one, two, three words, so something very short and brief. But here, uh, what they would like actually to be able to fully manage is something like, okay, if I have a user which is explaining its inform his information need in a detailed way with a um, natural language query with some additional words and context, uh, how we are able to actually um, create this final structure solar query. So yeah, the query actually has this length that is greater than some other, which are the keyword um, query. Uh, is this answering your question? <laughs> So it's not a huge amount of unstructured text you're searching in. It's uh, the, the actual solar implementation is based on a very structured set of documents. That's that's right. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And the second question is about the performance. What what is the average uh, answer time uh, for for a query when you first have to use the language model with maybe a huge prompt um, to analyze it? Yeah, so we actually have the, the time to do a proper um, benchmark uh, for the, the performance part. What we actually have seen with uh, the main problem was related to uh, the fact that we have this huge prompt because taking from solar the information, we have like this big JSON that we need somehow to uh, break down uh, due to the token limitation. And then we actually uh, implement the, the request whenever possible in parallel, so like the extractive and generative part uh, together to make it um, faster. But apart from that, yeah, we couldn't actually do a proper um, evaluation for the performance. Any other questions? Thank you for the talk, this was great, and it's nice to see uh, uh, the advantages and also the drawbacks of an approach. So thank you for sharing. I am curious when you mentioned uh, using uh, so the language model rephrasing for query expansion. At Algolia, this is something we've approached as well for widening the queries. One challenge with this is that you get higher recall, but also lower precision. So what are your approaches to maintaining good search relevance when you expand so much the query with synonyms, etc., that it might recall too much for the user to see? Yeah, I think that something could be maybe managed by the, the type of query you are going to write in solar, so like optimizing the, 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 the solar query in order to uh, prob probably manage this kind of thing, uh, like, I don't know, for, um, yeah, the model could actually return several different terms, so you need somehow to uh, be sure that whenever you have uh, more of them matching is because you actually want that type of, of document. So I actually need to think a bit more about that in order to be able to answer you, but if you would like after to discuss, I can uh, think about something. But yeah, the first thing that it comes in my mind is probably related to the solar query, somehow um, defining the type of field where you are searching for or some I don't know, boostings or something like this. Thank you. OK, one last online question, then the time is up. But you can continue to discuss later on. Um, can you give an overview about experience, performance, and costs? 
think we have already. <laughs> yeah, we we didn't have too much time to perform performance benchmark because we have just starting exploring this approach. Uh, and uh, yes, of course, uh, our plan is to continue with this project and, uh, of course, before um, deploying it or uh, more. Um, Bringing it to production, of course, we will uh, we will also evaluate the the performance and all the, this kind of stuff. Okay, then thank you for addressing the questions and providing insights with your presentations. Um, another applause, please. <laughs>